Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 35 of Direwolf20's Let's Play Ocean Block series. Uh, where today I've been, uh, between episodes, just cooking up a little bit more resources. One thing I decided to get into the business of is gold. Uh, we're gonna need a bit more gold than we currently have. Uh, remember when I had such a stupid amount of gold I didn't know what to do with it? Well, I figured out what to do with it. It's called induction cells, and it's a good time. Uh, so that's the plan for today. Uh, is, is to get our induction cells up and running, uh, would be awesome. Uh, let's see, are you, yeah, you have a little bit more enriched carbon, that's cool. I was just refilling some of these things. I should really get around to automating these, but it just, eventually, eventually. Uh, but in order to get induction cells, one of the big and important things we're going to need is lithium dust. So if we took a look at induction, we would note that, like, I can make an ultimate induction provider, except for the dust, and I can make an ultimate induction cell, it except for the dust, and we're short just a smidge of redstone and gold. Uh, and I'm a little bit worried about our redstone reserves, because I feel like we may not have quite enough. I might even go, like, the elite tier or something like that. Well, well, we'll see. We'll see what we're going to do. Um, you know, far less redstone required for than, you know, because we need, like, four of these uh, to get, you know, the top tier. So we'll see. We'll see. I mean, they can hold 204 billion by themselves, so do we really need such a stupid amount? Maybe not, especially because we have plans to go Draconic Evolution at some point in the future, right? So maybe what I'll do is just get a, you know, the elite tiers of these guys, and we'll see if that's good enough. And if it is, cool, and if it's not, then also we can always just use that one to make three more and make a four, you know, to the ultimate tier. Um, that said, let's get set up with the thermal evaporation stuffs. So I'm debating where I would like to put that bad boy right now, um, because, you know, stuff. All right, guys, so here's my plan. Tell me what you think. Uh, right over here, I just extended this walkway a bit, and I'll set up a couple thermal evaporation plants. So this should be straightforward enough. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is something like this, and I'll probably have... Three valves like that. Now, if I remember, the minimum is three and the maximum is 18. So that's pretty cool beans. Um, and then if I wanted to, let's just do a quick build to me. Yeah, we're definitely going to want more thermal evaporation blocks. And I'm just winging it on the height right now. Just winging it on the height right now. Uh, you are working, no? Yeah, you should be easy. You should just be going. Why are you not going? Uh, you're coming along. I'm looking forward to like, I don't know, this jetpack always feels like a little bit hard to control to me. Are you good now? Yeah, you are. You're good now. Sweet. I'm just winging it on the height, and we can always bump it up as we need, because we have plenty of room. Boom. Multi-block formed. I never actually checked if the height makes a... All right, so for some reason, uh, that video clip got cut there. I don't know what happened. Stopped recording for a second. But uh, the point being that I, what I was saying is I never really understood if taller height equals faster operation or just more buffer i've looked around online and nothing really says it at some point maybe i'll test that to find out like maybe we'll just play with it a little bit and see if we maybe we'll do that today maybe that'll be one of the things we test but anyway we've got a height of seven on this bad boy looking good uh i also made myself some electric pumps some resistive heaters we're probably going to want a couple of flux points so let's go ahead and get a pair of those real quick easy peasy sweet uh, we're also going to want some, we've got some ultimate stuff in here, so that looks good. So let's start with water. So I'm going to pump the water into here, and that should be as easy as, um, let's do this. Let's put you here with you here. Actually, yeah, I don't mind that being there. Let's, let's scuba suit you. That should be fine. Come on, mining fatigue, wear off. Goodness, slowness seven? Holy cow. 
Okay, and then you flux point here. We're probably going to need a couple. An another flux point, at least. At least another flux point. Okay, and now with the electric pump. Nice. You can ultimate mechanical pipe your water into there. And then you should be slowly but surely making brine at a rate of 2.5 millibuckets per tick based on the ambient temperature. Now there's two things we can do to amp this up, uh, which if you've seen any of my previous series, you know, you can put solar panels up there or you can stick a resistive heater on a thermal evaporation valve. So let's do the resistive heater because that's the easier way. Um, I don't exactly know exactly, exactly how this works, but I, I know, I, I think it's something like this, right? Yeah, that's cool. So he's amping up the heat, which will now amp up the production. So all we need for you, buddy, is a little bit of power on the double coin network. Boom. And in here we can measure the heat to temperature conversion or, or RF to temperature conversion. So basically the more energy we pump into this thing, the more heat we're gonna produce. Um, now we might wanna speed that up, but we'll see. Let's make it like 200. And that'll increase the temperature, which will increase the RF, the, the production of brine. Um, and that should be cool. And we'll see at what point the temperature stabilizes. So basically energy turning into heat, heat rate rising the temperature here, and this will eventually slow down and stabilize and that'll be its new temperature heat and that'll be cool. So we'll play with these numbers a little bit, but let's recreate this structure. I wonder if I can just straight up copy paste it. Do we have a, do we have a copy paste gadget? Do we have a copy paste gadget? Did I ever make one of those? I mean, we do now, right? So you should be in copy mode and I'm just gonna... First position set, good. First position set. Shouldn't that be working? It should be shift click to get the second position, right? Maybe he's not behaving himself today. Maybe he's, oh, hello, hold on. Area copied. Why don't you wanna include you? Maybe he doesn't like that there's, maybe copy paste gadget doesn't like tile entities. That might be the case. All right, I'm just gonna build it manually then. All right, so when I build this one, here's my thoughts. Tell me if I sound like I'm smart. Uh, I'm gonna put these guys here and here. Okay. Uh, and then, like this and then i don't need another thermal resistive heater right he can share his heat across the two machines and hopefully do that sufficiently so let's make sure that this doesn't lose heat so are you stable at 771 is that what's up okay cool so let's the acceleration on this is all wrong it's so hard to get a stable flight that's okay So that's a height of seven. Now, are you losing heat by chance? Eh, a little bit, a little bit, but let's see if he restabilizes at 771 once this guy gets up to 771. And then what I'm gonna have is an ultimate mechanical pipe right in between them set to extract here. So he should be turning his brine into liquid lithium. Nice. And we'll just play around with making this a little bit more stable as you know time goes on. So let's uh, get you into, let's do horizontal wallish mode. Um, we'll get a touch more of this. Eh, I don't know if I like that. Yeah, let's do, let's do a little bit smaller range. Does that look cool? That ah, looks cool. I'm down with that. And we'll see if the Feral Flare Lantern is enough to illuminate this area. Somebody told me, by the way, in one of the comments, this thing has a UI. I don't think it has a UI, right? I don't 
don't think so. Yeah, there's no UI on the Feral Flare Lantern. Whoever said that in the comments was lying. Lying, I say! All right. Uh, so liquid lithium, I assume, is stored in a tank. Um, we'll just do a basic for now. Is that cool? And then let's get a basic chemical tank ready to go. Um, so if we were to get a mechanical that that should be cool, right? And then the fluid tank, we want to a uh, condensator. Rotary condensator. Which also needs a basic tank. Now, will you auto output? I don't think you do. Uh, but what I can do is pipe him from underneath. Or I could just pipe him directly in and skip the whole tank bit. Yeah, forget the tank. Rotary condensator, this bad boy. Right? Forget the tank. Drain the tank, empty tank, go away. Uh, and we want you in the other mode. Yep, like that. That's what we want. Thank you. Smidgen of power here. And if we need to speed this up a little bit, we can do that with, you know, speed upgrades and stuff, right? Mechanism upgrades, speed. You take gas upgrades? I don't even know. I assume not. No. But you'll take energy. And you'll take speed. And then he'll boom into lithium lithium. So it looks like both of these stabilized around 432-ish. So what I'm going to do is just bump you up to 400, or if a tick. And that should bump these guys' temperatures up, and that's pretty cool, right? So you're doing your thing, you're doing your thing, and you are awesome. And then your lithium should go into a chemical crystallizer, which we can control-click our way to victory. What uh, quest reward did we get from Miscellaneous? Oh, it's a copy-paste gadget. Yay, random reward. Another Globetrotter Sash. Sweet. So chemical crystallizer. He's getting there on it. Slowly but surely. Boom. So we should configure you for gases, because it turns it into a gas, to eject on the right. And he shouldn't be in... in okay, cool. And then you're doing that, and then you just need a little bit of ultimate universal cable. Boom. Sweet. And then uh, let's get... I'm just going to provision a bunch of these, 32 and 32, just to have them on hand, because I know eventually we'll need them, right? Eventually. And he's making lithium. Nice. And then what we can have is just a drawer, you know, or we could... You know what? Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Where's that... Can I put lithium in a thing over here? Because what I'll do... Yeah, lithium could chill in this thing, right? I like that plan. Let's have lithium chill in that thing. Now, what did we do with these guys? They're void upgrading? Perfect. So we will have lithium chill in these dudes, right? Um, perfect. Yes, I like. Good. And then we will ender chest our way to also I feel like half the time I hit the the hot key for this and it's not responding properly and every time I test it it works fine but then like I'm flying around and I hit the hot key and it doesn't it's like, nope, I'm not going to listen to the fact that you pressed the button. But yeah, we just do that, and then we items auto-eject off, or on, and then boom, Bob's your uncle.
How cool is that? Eh? Eh? Right? And that's pretty slick. And now we've got, you know, what I would assume to be lithium for days. Yeah? I don't see why not. Look at it. Here it comes. So, I don't think we need this to be any faster than it currently is. But what I wouldn't mind is letting the stabilization thing happen. You probably could use some speed upgrades. Yeah, let's maybe do that. So that you get all the water you can have. That'll be nice. So you're currently around... So I'm just curious. If I bump this up a little bit... I'd like to see you stabilize the temperature. Let's let the temperature stabilize a minute. Because um, once the temperature stabilizes and the production stabilizes, then I'll bump up the height just to see if it makes a difference. All right, I'm going to call this close enough. Uh, so right around 73-ish millibuckets per tick. So what I'm going to do is bump this up by two levels. You know, the temperature went down a little bit when I did that. That's interesting. That's interesting. So why'd the temperature go down when I did that? Look, temperature's like rapidly dropping. So that seems to be like counterproductive, right? Doesn't that seem counterproductive? Or maybe, no, no, temperature's going down. Like, it was going down, right? Just curious if it'll be going up now when I do this. I should just go look at the code and be like, how does this thing work? And now it's going up. I don't understand anything anymore. Long story short, we'll leave it be. It actually is pretty cool. It looks like it's almost-ish breaking even. So like if we look at how much lithium is in here, it's kind of breaking even-ish. So it's it's pretty good. And then this will just run forever. I might give him a redstone signal or something to turn him off. Um, but like it's almost not worth it. I don't think it's a lot of energy. It's like, you know, ish. But just letting it run in void is not the end of the world. And that's probably what I'll wind up doing. Hey, we have enough lithium. Sweet! Let's build an induction thingy. I was checking to see if I had enough food, because I was getting low on food. So what I'm thinking is build a very small one that can hold just the two that I need. So if we did a three by three base, it would be one by one, one interior, right? So if we did three by three by four, so that would be um, 18 uh, plus, times two minus two, so 34-ish, yeah? 34, but then we'll probably want two ports. So we'll want 32 of these. Yeah, and we want our elite induction provider and our elite induction cell. And then we'll want 32 induction casings. Fair? All right, I think it's all done. So you, you, you and you, and let's go put them where they're supposed to live, which is right in here. Uh, so where do we want this guy to live? That's a good question. Maybe in the center back of this room? Does that sound cool? But you're going to be a three by three. So yeah, let's put you like... You know what? I'm going to put you right up against the wall. Nope, he doesn't go there. Cool, and then you're gonna be a port for in and out. So how about input mode on the left, output mode on the right? And then we will, I'm gonna change this up, right? Uh, but we're gonna put you, the provider, 
and the cell. Remember, this determines how much energy can be transferred per tick. So the more and higher tier providers means this can transfer energy more rapidly. So more and more in and out. But, uh, you know, the elite provider can handle 6.5 million RF a tick. So I think we're fine. That should last a while, right? And then the cell is how much it stores, right? So this cell holds 204 billion RF. Okay. Whoops. Boom. Nice. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So first off, um, generator's flux point. Generator's flux point. So he should be outputting one RF a tick, right? So that's from our turbine, which is probably running very slowly. Now you're a plug. So I want you to be the generator's plug, right? Let's get a plug for here. Oh, we're missing that stuff, flux dust. Perfect timing. How do we get that? How does that make a uh, tempered glass jar? Oh, pfft. annoying. Annoying craft. We should probably automate this at some point. Uh, what temperature do we need? Low temperature. Low temperature, but temperature nonetheless. So let's get a magma block. And then... How do I clear this? I think that would work, yes. It's been a while since I played with this mod. All right, let's get some titanium dust and some redstone. Doesn't hurt to get a bunch. Let's get this many. Am I remembering this correctly? Is it four to one? 32 to four. Oh, yeah, ish. Works. For now. And we'll look at automating things like that kind of ish in the future. But what we need is another point. Right? Because the point provides energy. No, we want the plug. See how he's mixed them up. It's fine. Plug receives energy from adjacent block. Right? So what we want is you to send out energy to the Direwolf 20 network. And you should send out energy to the generators network because now this is a dedicated generator, right? So all the RF here, um, 102,000 FE per tick. Sweet, that's probably the limit. Yeah, 102. Yeah, that's the, that's the max output. Should all be going into here, right? So now we have input is the 102, output is that number, right? And then once this drains completely, we could either remove this cell and just put the generator plug on the gas burning generator or, you know, whatever we want to do. It's all good. But now you're filling up and we've got, you know, some millions of RF here. Now, if we wanted to bump this up, right, because you're doing 102,000 right now, we could go turn on our reactor, which we should not turn on like that. We should turn on like this. Cool. And he's producing another 45-ish thousand RF a tick. And now we have somewhere for all this energy to go. Right? So now we've got 204 or 140-ish coming in, right? Because 45-ish from the turbine and 102-ish from this guy. And then once he's completely empty, it'll be just whatever this is producing plus the turbine. Cool? 
All right, now the other thing we want to check out with on the turbine, just to make sure, but based on those numbers, I'm pretty sure this is correct, are this dude should be outputting 45 and this guy should be receiving zero because we made his priority negative 100. So that works, right? Isn't that cool? And if we wanted to bump this guy up to like 25, we could without too much of a problem. He's producing 1.14 million RF a tick. He's not having a problem with water, apparently. He should be transferring 1.14 million RF a tick. He's outputting 44,000. Why is that? Or 400,000, I don't know. What's going on over here? Do you have a limit on? You might have a limit on still. I, didn't, I don't think I disabled limit on him. Now we got that. That is receiving a stupid amount of power. He's still sending. Haha, <laughs> this is cool. Uh, and then... So, our, our, our energy trash can just saved our life. Just want you to know that. And now he's at zero again, right? Ha <laughs> ha cool. I don't think I need that much power right now. So, like, you know, in the interest of being safe, let's do two. Uh, and that's still sitting around close to 100,000 RF a tick. So, I mean, just fine. Thank you very much. <laughs> just fine. Uh, and we're able to handle all this power. No problemo. Okay, cool. I think I would like to... Oh, look at this. We already have a billion power stored. <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, what I am going to do is I'm going to set you to turn that off. So he should be empty now. And I'm going to put you like that so that he can dump all his ethylene so that these guys work together uh, to produce power. Obviously, the steam turbine generating way more than the ethylene thing, but it doesn't hurt to leave the ethylene thing there, right? I would say so. Uh, and you're filling up because reasons. Yes. Output on left. So you should be draining now? Cool. Yeah, flux, this thing counts as an energy storage device, so it was, I'm gonna leave it there. You know what, I'm gonna leave it there. That sounds like a plan to me. Sounds like a plan to me. Now, you guys are probably going to choke for power. Yes, you are. That makes sense. Um, how do I want to deal with that problem? Do we want to deal with that problem or no? You know what we'll do? We'll put ultimate universal cables... Two, three, four, five. We'll do that. And then we'll plug you. Is that cool? Yeah, I like that. I like that. Cool. Works for me. Alrighty then. And we've got one and a half billion RF stored. All right, so I feel like this is a productive day. Uh, lots of power gen going on. Now, what I should probably do between episodes, because I don't have a, a throttle for this, but we're gonna fill up on waste eventually. And if I ignore this, it's gonna be a problem. So let's turn you off. Oh, this is the off, I forget. I always forget what, you know. But anyway, off, off, no more production. You know, RF production is dripping to nothing. Uh, I think, we just, you know, we should be fine for a while. I think that this 2 billion will hold me over for a little bit, especially considering our input is still at 11,000 and our output is not terrible. It's just, it's just a fluctual kind of output as things need it. So we'll wrap up the episode here. Uh, we've got, you know, that whole thing going plus the induction. That's beautiful. Next episode, we'll come back and focus on processing all our nuclear waste. I'm going to do a heavy focus on polonium first. Right? Not plutonium. Polonium. This one. Yeah. Polonium first. Because I would like the mecha suit for sure. Right? The mecha suit helmet is fun. Uh, and then, you know, obviously there's going to be some other stuff uh, that we're going to want. But, I mean, plutonium has its role. Its main purpose being for SPS casings. Unless, like I said, we get low on uranium, which I don't think we're going to get low on. Right? I might be wrong. Well, okay, so we're low on uranium. 
but not that low. We do have an infinite amount of it because of uranium essence, and I can always speed that up a little bit if I need to. I'm not sweating it. All right, wrapping up point. Dowel 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We'll come back next time and uh, continue along our path of progressing into massive power gen so that we can get into Draconic because the next step, once we have lots of power stored up, we can start looking at Draconic Evolution, which I haven't touched in 116 yet, so I'm very excited to give it a try. All right, take it easy.